What is, are we live? Are we live? Good question. Good question indeed. Bear with me. Hope oh, this is a, uh, no, we're working now. Happy days. Okay, chefs, what is the beef? Thought the live stream was down there for a sec, but we're back in the mix. Guys, lifestyle can make or break a chef. Lifestyle can make or break a chef. And especially in the times that we're, that we're currently in, where everyone's on lockdown, especially right now. I spoke on the podcast today uh, that I did with Peter and we were discussing this topic and I think it's really, really, really fucking important because I was asking Peter about what he was doing. Um, Peter's obviously my co-host. He's been in Sheffield for two years um, and he's, you know, Peter's fucking extremely disciplined and he's made a lot of changes in his life since he started. And I asked him the question, it's like, what would Peter two years ago have done during this pandemic versus now? And uh, the answer was very interesting. And it was similar enough to myself years back. I would have done this exact same thing. He said, you know, I would have woken up in the morning, the version of me two years ago during this pandemic, I would have woken up at 11 o'clock, would have stared at my phone till one o'clock, got in the Xbox and played for fucking 10 or 12 hours or watched some shite on Netflix, got nothing done, go to bed feeling unsatisfied, feel fucking irritated, and not comfortable in my own skin during the day. Um, and generally just feeling shit and not really acknowledging it. He's like, that's what I would have done a couple of years ago. And right now, you know, my whole family, like we're in a structure where, you know, we cook at this time during the week. I've been doing stuff with my sons um, in the house, you know, to keep them active. I started a new course, you know, I've been doing my exercise on a daily basis. I've been doing my reading. I've been earning my couch time and fuck, this time actually feels great because I've been spending it with family. We've been making the best of a bad hand. And even though, you know, work-wise I'm under pressure and I don't have a job and income isn't there the way it should be and things have fallen out on that end, I'm still here living a positive life. I'm still here feeling okay and feeling fine. And that will tell you absolutely everything you need to know, Chef, is that lifestyle can make or break you. You know, I know I would be so fucking lost, so lost if if I was stuck with the habits that I had way back when, you know, the habits that I had when I was in the industry and I wasn't taking care of myself and all of those things. Like, I just know where I would be at and I'd be fucked mentally at this stage in the game. And that's why lifestyle is so important because <clears throat> when everyone's in work and restaurants are running or wherever you're working is up and running and you're living your life as normal and you've got your structure and you've got your roster and all of that, you know, you can have this mindset of, well, I'm going to sacrifice everything for work. You know, chefs have this martyrdom fucking mentality. I used to have it as well. I work more hours than you. You know, I work harder than you kind of mentality. You know, we all have, we've all been there. We've all said that. And you end up having this martyrdom mentality that kind of stops you or creates resistance in your head when it comes to making a positive change in your life. And I know for me, overcoming that and just getting real with myself and going, man, you are not happy. You are not in a good fucking place, Cam. You're not in a good place. And you need to, you know, start pulling your, for lack of a better term, pulling your shit together. Face the man in the mirror. You're not fucking taking care of yourself. You're stupidly giving in devices at every possible turn. Um, you've stopped being disciplined when it comes to your exercise. You've let go of the things that actually make you feel good. You're going to have to pull this together. And I did. I did pull it together and I managed to. And fast forward, you know, whatever, fucking six years later, um, and we've got Chef in and, you know, our system and the way we do things. And the, the principles that I learned in that period where I had to pull myself together and get my lifestyle sorted allowed me to build habits and allowed me to build structure and order into my life structure and order where that structure is still what's keeping me sane in the midst of this pandemic so like as but as a normal thing i wake up when my alarm goes off or we wake up early enough in the morning whereas i never used to wake up early i try and wake up early when i wake up i hydrate i take my vitamins i do my meditation i plan out my day in my diary and as, as i said and i've been harping on about you know i'll move i'll get my exercise done and i'll try and make that part of my morning routine and that structure that I've built into my place, into my life, um, outside of this pandemic has kept me sane within it. And for so many chefs, I think right now you're having to pay the piper for the ill discipline, you know, and I don't blame you.
You know, I don't, I honestly, I don't, I don't think it's your fault. I don't think it's your fault that you're in the shit. You know, I really don't. I think you've been programmed to do it by the industry the same way I was programmed to do it by the industry. And even if it isn't your fault though, you got to understand that it's, it's your responsibility because it's your life. And who does your life affect? You know, who does your life affect? It probably affects a lot of people, friends, family, whatever, relationships. So when you understand that taking care of yourself and your lifestyle is what allows you to show up for your responsibilities. And um, when we don't take care of ourselves, we struggle to show up for our responsibilities. We don't have the energy. We don't have the headspace. We're feeling anxious. We're feeling stressed out. We don't switch off. You know, our life is ruled by vices and bad decisions as opposed to intention and positivity. Like we end up stuck in a very dark place. So the four stages that you'll go through, chef, and I said this on the podcast, was the first stage for any chef is they they see something to do with a lifestyle change and they're highly resistant to it. They've got that die on your shield, go out in your shield mentality that chefs have because you're programmed to do it for your job. But you're the ultimate one who loses out of that predicament. You know, it's very, very few chefs break through and become fucking millionaires and, you know, are on chef's table and all of this shit. For the most part, most people are struggling day to day, not making what they're worth. You know what I mean? Not getting paid what they're worth, getting overworked, overstressed, all of these things. So the first step is breaking out of that programming of thinking that that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to sacrifice you and everything in your life for your job. You have to get over that. Once you get over that, you potentially, and I find the thing that drives a lot of chefs towards making the positive change is pain, a painful experience, um, like a loss in the family or fucking, you know what I mean? Um, uh, a relationship that's on the rocks or under pressure. Uh, maybe you got fired from a job. Maybe you're stepping up into another role and it's scaring you. We have some kind of painful situation um, that drives us into action because action drives pain because we'll take action to get out of pain, you know. And when we're not in pain, we become complacent because we think life's fine. And it's like, oh, no, I can deal with this. I can deal with this until you can't deal with it and you have to do something. Once you take that step, chef, you have two ways to go. When you're in that painful situation, you can try and escape even further with the vices and all that shit, or you can face it up when you can start fixing your life. And once you start fixing your life, there's two stages that happen after that. The second one, the third one then is the physical and the mental changes. So if you think about, you know, like losing weight, feeling more confident in yourself as a result, walking down the street with your chest proud, having more energy and headspace and clarity of focus when you're going to do things, whether in work or outside of work, you know, mentally you're in a better spot. And that's a really, really important part of the process, but that's not the end goal. That's not where you need to stop. That's just the start. The last part of the lifestyle change and why it's so important and the whole reason behind this video to get you to understand that changing your operating system is the last thing. And it's the most important thing how you operate on a daily basis. Think about it. Your habits, your routines, your rituals. Half of what we do on a daily basis is habit. It's autopilot. We don't think about it. So when I mean, you try and put that in perspective, that means like if you get up out of bed and you don't make your bed and your fucking laundry's all over the place and you're just, you're not, you know, fuck the plan, don't need to plan. I'm just going to wing it today. I'm going to open my phone and get distracted straight off the bat and look at emails and look at fucking Instagram. You know, if that's how you operate, well, ultimately your life is not going to be very fucking enjoyable it's going to feel like weirdly unsatisfied you know unfulfilled whereas you know if you can change your operating system through your lifestyle where you've got good solid habits and you're waking up early and you're disciplined that discipline gives you control of life so think about it when i wake up this morning i wake up at a specific time i do my hydration my vitamins i fucking meditate and i plan my day and i'll do yoga or exercise or i'll, do, I'll read or i'll do something I'm being intentional with my actions and my discipline and that gives me control of what's happening in my life. That is the key thing that a lot of chefs feel they lack is they don't have the structure and they don't have control over their life. Well, discipline is the key to you regaining that control. It's the key to you regaining control. I cannot state that clearly enough for you. The discipline is what's key, you know? So you need to, first off, whatever self-limiting beliefs you have where you feel you can't do it because you don't have time, you're not, you're a chef and chefs don't do that, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever. You got to get over that and you got to embrace a new lifestyle. You got to embrace that discipline because that's what's going to give you fulfillment and satisfaction outside the kitchen and allow you to build more work-life balance for yourself. 
that's our video for today chefs if you enjoyed it or took some from it give us a thumbs up and a comment much love to all of you hope you are keeping safe out there